we're going to begin a unit on photosynthesis, which is basically how plants make their own food. Um, in order to start that unit, though, we need to have an idea of um, the different parts of a plant cell because some of the parts of the plant cell actually help in photosynthesis. Um, I also want to talk about what's the difference between a plant cell and an animal cell because the Cambridge exam tends to ask a lot of questions about plant and animal cells and how they're the same and how they're different comparing and contrasting them. And so I want to review that with you this year as well. So we're going to have a short video here where we talk about the parts of a plant cell, the parts of an animal cell, and how they're the same and how they're different. A um, couple quick reminders, make sure you're taking your Cornell notes and you have your summary written. Um, the tops of the slides have questions. You can use those as your questions on the left-hand side of your template if you'd like. And don't forget, don't just write down what's on the slides. Um, there's going to be some things that I say that are super important as well. And so write those things down as well, not just what's on the slides, but things that I say. Um, you can pause the video if I'm going too quickly and, and then restart it up once you're ready for me to continue. Um, and that's about it. Again, don't forget to have your uh, Cornell notes done and your summary done before you come to class because you can't do the labs if you don't have the Cornell notes done. Um, you'll have to go off and do them first and that's going to end up um, wasting your time. So make sure that you have them done when you come to class. Here we go. Um, this is a representation of a plant cell. I'm not going to talk about all the parts of a plant cell. We've covered that before in sixth grade. Um, but I am going to talk about the parts that are most important to photosynthesis and the parts that are most important um, as far as the Cambridge exam goes. Um, we have the cell wall here. The cell wall basically helps give the plant structure and it helps protect the plant. If you think about it, a plant kind of is at a disadvantage in some ways because it doesn't have an endoskeleton or bones to help protect it and give it structure, help it to grow tall and straight and upright. Um, it also doesn't have an exoskeleton or a crunchy outer shell to help it grow tall and straight and upright. So a plant needs something that will help, number one, protect it, and number two, will help it to grow upright so it doesn't just flop over when it gets to a certain height. And that thing that protects the cells of a plant and helps the plant to grow upright is the cell wall. Okay? So that's the first part of a plant cell. The next one I'm going to talk about is the cell membrane. The cell membrane controls what comes in and out of the cell. It allows good things to come into the cell and bad things to go out of the cell. Um, it also allows proteins, which are good things that the cell makes, to go out of the cell. So it kind of controls what comes in and what goes out. Then we have this big thing right here called the nucleus. The nucleus is the control center of the cell. basically controls what the cell does. It tells it what it needs to do to function. And we're going to find out later in the year that inside of this nucleus is something called DNA. And that DNA gives the cell instructions on what kind of proteins to make and how it needs to function. Then we have right here vacuoles. And I don't really like this picture, guys, and I'll tell you why. Because in a plant cell, vacuoles are huge. You might want to write that down. They're big. Usually in a plant cell, when you see a plant cell, the nucleus is small and the vacuole is actually even larger than the nucleus. And so they're usually pretty big. Vacuoles hold water for a plant cell, so they contain water and they hold the water for the cell. Um, they can hold other things too. They're like a big storage tank, but usually they hold water. Um, they are important and they are so large in a plant cell because plants need a lot of water, number one. And number two, they're also very large inside of a plant cell because they help give the plant cell, again, structure so that the plant can grow straight and stay upright. Okay, so that's a vacuole. And you have the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is the gooey gel that all the organelles kind of float around within. Um, you have the mitochondria up here. The mitochondria is the energy plant for the cell. It creates energy for the cell to be able to carry out its functions. And finally, the, the part that's most important for photosynthesis is you have these things called chloroplasts. Chloroplasts actually contain a chemical <coughs> pardon me, called chlorophyll. And that chlorophyll is a green chemical that basically pulls in sunlight and allows the sunlight to come in and, and it hangs on to sunlight, the energy. And then that sunlight is used in photosynthesis. Chloroplasts are basically the reason why plants are green because that chlorophyll inside of them is green okay, and it gives the plant kind of a greenish tint. And again, that chlorophyll is used to capture the energy from the sun. 
Now it's important to note that not all plant cells have chloroplasts. For instance, root cells, the cells that are down in the roots of a plant, um, they're completely underground most of the time. You, they never see the light of day. They don't get any sunlight at all. So root cells don't, don't have chloroplasts because they don't need them. They don't ever get any sun, so they don't have any light to capture. Okay? So chloroplasts are only located inside the parts of a plant that do photosynthesis. And I'll give you a preview. We're going to find out in our next video that that actually is in the leaves. So they actually are located within the leaves of a plant where photosynthesis happens. So these are the major parts of a plant cell. This is an animal cell. The major parts of an animal cell are basically, again, the cell membrane allows stuff to come in and out of the cell. That's the same as in a plant cell. We have the cytoplasm where all the organelles kind of float around. Again, that's the same as a plant cell. Um, we have the mitochondria that provide energy. Again, that's the same as a plant cell. We have the nucleus, okay, which has the DNA inside and gives the instructions to the, to the cell. And again, that's the same as a plant cell. And finally, we have these vacuoles, but here it's a little different. The vacuoles in an animal cell still store things and hold things like water, but they're usually a lot smaller in an animal cell than a plant cell. So this picture is actually pretty correct. The nucleus usually will be a lot bigger than the vacuoles in an animal cell. Okay? So they're a lot smaller. So those are the major parts of an animal cell. So what are the main differences between the two, plants and animal cells? Well, plant cells again have a cell wall. Animal cells do not have a cell wall. and okay? They don't need one. Plant cells in the leaves and the places where photosynthesis happens have chloroplasts. Again, chloroplasts contain chlorophyll. It's a green chemical, makes the leaves look green. Okay? Um, and in an animal cell, there are no chloroplasts because animal cells do not make their own food from the sun. And finally, in a plant cell, you have very large vacuoles to hold a lot of water. And in an animal cell, you have very small vacuoles to hold little bits of water. These are the three main differences, and again, they're super important because usually the Cambridge test has at least one question that asks you about the differences between a plant and an animal cell, and these are it. Plant cells have cell walls, animal cells do not. Chloroplasts are in plant cells for photosynthesis, animal cells don't have them. Plant cells have large vacuoles, animal cells have very small vacuoles. So those are the differences between plant and animal cells. Make sure you finish your Cornell notes. Make sure that you post to um, Collaborize Classroom at least one question or one comment about the video. And have a good day.